My buddy Khan, very misunderstood dog. We'll get more to that here in a few. I tricked you. Down. <laughs> you see how fast they get into a pattern, right? Tell them to out a few times in a row. And the same picture. And as soon as you start saying something, they go to the last thing you said. That's why we throw in something a little different, different command. So they actually have to listen to your words. And you see our tug game isn't aggre is a, as aggressive it's if like I'm playing with Dante, right? Remember, his owner's in her 80s. 
And so I taught him to play tug with her. And if you go back to Khan's boarding train, you see her playing tug with him. So I taught him how to play tug where she can do it. He's my buddy. Oh, oh. down. Yes. Good boy, Khan. All right, give me a second. Okay. So check it out. I love this dog. Like this is my buddy. I love him very much. If you go back and watch our first encounter when I first met him, he was a very misunderstood dog and rightfully so. That's what a lot of people do, right? So when they see that kind of aggression, which a lot of people would label it, people are very quick to try to deal with the unwanted behavior, to try to crush it, to punish it, right? So yesterday I made that post on Facebook about the misunderstanding of overly harsh negative reinforcement, people thinking they're using punishment and oh boy, did it go crazy, right? But I knew it would. But there's plenty of people in that post that understand what I'm talking about because they know. But when people don't know, they're going to get pissed and frustrated. And they're always gonna go back to the definitions of the four quadrants, right? And they wanna label everything. I'm not saying those definitions are wrong, but they don't tell the whole truth. But again, only some people will understand that. And the ones that do understand it, they could deal with problem behaviors very, very quickly. So what triggered that post? One of the things that triggered it was the day before I saw a trainer, a trainer who I like, he's a nice guy, I like him. He shared a post of someone that I have zero respect for as a trainer because I know what they do to animals. And I know how many people they have taught to do the same to animals because they don't have the knowledge or ability to train dogs. And that's just a fact, not a popular statement, but I really don't give a damn about that, right? So he writes a lot of philosophical stuff and he's a very good writer, but you having the ability to write about dog training doesn't mean you could train a dog, right? And we've all seen a few different YouTube trainers just destroy dogs. Destroy dogs. No matter what the tool, destroy dogs, because everything comes down to crushing the behavior, punishing the unwanted behavior, right? But that post, I commented on it, and I very rarely go onto someone else's page to make a comment, but it popped up on my page, and, and this trainer that I like was sharing it because he thinks it was a brilliant, a brilliant post, right? And it had something to do I'm just paraphrasing, had something to do with punishing the arousal. And when you punish the arousal, you get like a two for one kind of deal. And basically it forces the dog to respect you. Something to, you know, not those exact words, but that's it. That's how you earn the dog's respect. Being harsh, punishing the arousal, A, I'm in charge. And I commented, I said, this is, is this is, the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen because it is, it is. That's the go-to for people who don't know what they're doing, right? So Khan is a perfect example and he's just one of many dogs that I could use, but you guys have seen him a lot. So I'll talk about him. His human aggression, which it wasn't, seemed that way. I never punished this dog. I never once tried to hammer that dog. Not one time did I put him on a slip lead and choke it out of him. Not one time did I put him on a prong collar and yank it out of him. Not one time did I put him on an e-collar and try to shock it out of him. Not one single time. Not one time did I take something and hit him over the head. All of these things are what people do that don't know what the fuck they're doing, right? The beautiful thing about getting older, I'm in my 50s now, I've been doing this a long time. The beautiful thing about where I'm at now 
is I really don't give a fuck what comes out of my mouth. I'm just going to be honest. It's plain and simple. It's plain and simple. So the people that come to my seminars or the seminars I do with Jay and Joel, most of the people that come to them understood what I was talking about yesterday because they've seen it. They've experienced the difference, what I was talking about, right? They see it. They understand it. And of course, I had to learn that somewhere because when you think you know everything, you don't. So we have trainers with five, 10 years under their belt. And this isn't nothing against any one specific, specific trainer. A bunch of people started sending me and some were on the post demonstrations going through the quadrants. This is negative reinforcement. This is punishment. Not one person was even close to being right. But the problem is, that's what everyone thinks. They think the same way. Well, if that's punishment and it works, why does the dog keep doing the behavior, right? Why do the dogs that come to me and many others still have the problems after you punish the shit out of them hundreds of times? Like literally no exaggeration, hundreds of times, right? Highest level on the e-collar choking them, prong collar, everything you could think of. Why doesn't it work then? Why? Only the people who knew what I was posting yesterday understand that. And Khan is a prime example, right? The other thing, I posted a video, I never knew it would have this kind of impact, but he has to be put out to go to the vet. You aren't touching his nails. So he had to be put out to do his nails. I told the owner, I'll do his nails. And I filmed it. Very unprofessional video as usual. Me sitting in my garage, right? And I taught him that I'm going to do your nails. And I took a few days to do it. Instead of just saying, no, you have to do this now. Right? Could I have done that with him? Yeah. Would he have bitten me? Nope. This dog will not bite me. He won't bite me. He could play with my kids. He could play with my wife. I trust this dog 100% as much as any dog. And this was a dog that was labeled in a very misunderstood way, right? But why is it that by day two, I believe it was, he was offering me his paw to do his nails? I didn't know that would have such an impact. But now I've had hundreds of messages saying I could do my dog's nails for the first time. I showed them how to do it. Then I showed it again with Rody, and I broke it down, right? Through none of that is there any punishment. Through none of that. There's no e-collars. There's no prong collars. I'm not anti-punishment. But when you understand punishment, when you understand all the quadrants, you rarely have to go there. But today, what we see in the social media world is the majority of trainers day one, that's what they go to because we're going to stop that behavior, right? You go on TikTok, you got really fast talking dog trainers, or as I like to call them, used car salesmen, bragging about walking down the street with a four month old puppy with an e-collar on. A four month old puppy, sometimes a three month old puppy with an e-collar on, and they're bragging and selling their services as they're walking down the street. That's not dog training. Anyone who knows what they're looking at knows that's bullshit and it hurts everybody in the dog industry, it hurts everybody, right? We all know what that trainer did. He created a mobile underground fence. The dog learns very quickly. You step out of this area and you're going to feel the pain. And then who gets blamed? What gets blamed? The naughty e-collar, the bad e-collar the tool that they just banned in England, the tool that they banned in other places, right? Even though there's tons of trainers out there not harming animals with that tool, but saving a lot of animals. But people praise that. And this trainer has a huge following. There's not just one. There's multiple trainers that have huge followings. Go on TikTok, Instagram, speak real fast. Look what I could do. Anyone who knows what they're looking at knows you're not doing shit except destroying a young dog, right? But it's getting worse and worse. So when I saw that post, I had to comment on it. 
and I rarely make negative comments on someone else's page about dog training anymore. I just don't, I don't want no part of it, right? I don't need to. But it was shared by someone that I like. And it bothers me that he thinks that this trainer is providing something good because he's not. And many of those trainers are just, just, uh, just so full of shit, just so full of shit and destroying dog after dog after dog. We've had people at our seminars, solo seminars and the ones I do with Jay and Joel, full grown men break down in tears crying when they think about what some of these trainers had them do to their dog. Witness in front of many people, right? Full grown men crying when they see how we train dogs and what we're able to produce with the dogs very quickly, including stopping really bad behaviors that some of these dogs have had for years, year, up to 10 years. We've had really strong pit bulls, Malinois, Rottweilers, all kinds of dogs that have had terrible, dangerous behaviors. And we're getting rid of them over the weekend without ever being an asshole. And what we normally have to do is tell the people got to ease up. This is too much, right? I call it porn training. Louder, harder, louder, harder. Porn training. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. You have to be able to build the trust of the animal. Make a connection with the animal. Show the animal what you want. Teach the animal how to do it. Motivate the animal. Then you can make the, make the dog do it. But see, when you go through all that stuff, and it doesn't take long, then those bad behaviors are very, very easily easily dealt with very easily what do you think hon tell the camera tell them i'm not bullshit because you are my boy tell them what i'm talking about right tell them so the e-collar was used on this dog with no not by me there was no bad intentions behind it right good people doing the best they can to train dogs because they don't know any different I've never seen anyone take an e-collar, crank it up, punish aggression, and the next day the dog's like, hey man, I really like dogs. I really like people. It doesn't work. The overuse of punishment, the overuse of the e-collar, it hurts everyone in the dog world, everyone. No matter what side you fall on, no matter how you train, it hurts everyone. Just ask the people in the UK. Ask the people in Switzerland that can't even crate their dogs. Ask the people in Australia that lost their tools. People all over the world lost their tools because, first of all, there's a lack of understanding by people making these rules. You have a very, very radical side that wants to ban everything. And then you have a side that doesn't quite have the ability to do what they tell people to do, and they always fall to force, and the animal never wins. <sighs> down. No, down. Yes. I never get this. I would never get this from him if I tried to crush those behaviors that he came to me for. Not a chance. Not a chance, but he's my buddy. He's my buddy. He's my boy. But that's my two cents. I'm very passionate about it. I've been for many years. So, 13, 14, 15 years ago, when the whole social media thing started, and I started running my mouth about we're going to lose this tool because of people we're doing to dogs. Some of you that will see this jumped all over me. I was full of shit, making it up to try to make myself look better. I don't need the business. I don't want the business. I could write my own ticket, right? Don't need it. That long ago, I started talking about it. And now we're like in an emergency situation. What do you think? Yeah, that's somebody walking by. So before, like that too, like somebody passing my house, they couldn't do that. He'd go crazy. He'd go absolutely crazy. 
I never punished him for going crazy, somebody walking past my house. I trained him, I taught him. And then when he did something I didn't want, I say, hey, dude, knock that shit off. That's not what I want. And he goes, oh, geez, I'm so used to doing this. I, I, why didn't you say something sooner? I was like, well, Con, I had to talk to you and teach you first. So then you understand this weird language that I'm saying. He's like, yeah, it kind of makes sense. He goes, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bark at people walking past your house anymore. Cause it really, it doesn't do anything. I'm like, I know, right? I just told them what you said to me. I told them what you said to me. Get over here. Get over, I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm gonna kick your ass. Oh, oh, oh. Give me that. Give me that. Oh. <laughs> A lot of you out there, you don't love this animal. You love the money that comes with it. You love the social media likes and follows and endorsements that come with it. You don't love this animal. You could tell by the way you work with it. You could really tell by how the animal looks at you. Oh, ha. Ooh. Ooh. Place. Yes. All done, big guy. That's it. Long video, sorry.